Hello and welcome back to this series on topic modeling and text classification for the digital humanities or anyone who wants to watch. In the last video, we looked at k-means and tf-idf and we clustered a bunch of data. I did not, however, in the last video, address one important thing. How do you visualize this data so that you can view it and see where your documents are plotted on a graph? And that's what we're going to focus on in this video. In other words, we're going to focus on data visualization, which is oftentimes important when you don't want to read a long list of cluster names. Instead, you want to look at where documents appear in a graph. And that's how we're going to do it today. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using matplotlib, which is a very important library for the sciences. And it's a very important library for humanists, largely in the realm of uh, mapping out social networks. But it's also very useful for plotting out data such as features, and in our case, clusters of data. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with our exact same code right where we left off in the last video. We're going to change this, however, from five or from 20 down to five, just to simplify the number of clusters here. And the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, I don't want to come up with 20 different colors. Uh, I want to be able to have just five. And you'll see why that's relevant in just a second. Essentially, each cluster in our map is going to receive a color. And as you're going to tell when we plot this all out, five clusters is not nearly enough for the data at hand. And that's why this is also useful. So let's pick up right where we left off. We're going to run everything in uh, one script as well. We're not going to make fancy functions right now. Now we're just going to do some basic scripting. So we're going to import matplotlib. It's important to install that dot pyplot as plt. And to do matplotlib, you'll simply pip install matplotlib, just like that. The next thing that you need to import is we're going to say from sklearn, we're still working with sklearn, dot decomposition import PCA. This is going to be essential for allowing us to actually plot our data. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our k-means model up here. And we're going to say k-mean indices not capital, k-mean underscore indices. And this is coming from a stack overflow post. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Dot model fit underscore predict. We're going to pass in those vectors that we saw up here in the last video as well from the TF-IDF. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take essentially all those vectors, all those keywords, and use that data to uh, plot everything out. And we're going to do this by creating a new object called lowercase pca, make that equal to uppercase pca. So we're going to grab the pca right here from the S um, scikit-learn library, and we're going to pass in one argument, and that's going to be the number of components. We're going to make that equal to two. And then what we need to do is we need to actually plot out our data. You're going to see this all kind of happening really quickly as we write all this code. So we're going to say scatter plot points. And we are going to pass in, sorry, we're going to make that equal. And we're going to say PCA uh, dot fit transform. And we're going to say vectors dot to array. So we're going to be setting all of that uh, to an actual array. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of colors. Now, these number of colors need to correspond to our number of clusters. In a matplotlib, you can either pass hexadecimal colors or you can use their built-in commands. So you can pass in numbers as R for red, B for blue, C for cyan, um, Y for yellow, and M for, I think it's magenta. I can never remember that color. It's that purplish looking one though. And now we're going to plot out our X axis. So we're going to make X axis equal to, we're going to give an, a list, and we're going to say O, O0 for O in scatter plot points. And then we're going to do a little bit of copying and pasting. Never a good idea to do this, but I know what I'm doing here, so it's okay. And we're going to do that. That's going to allow us to plot out the data in a X and a Y axis. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do fig and set the axis is going to be equal to plt.subplots. And if you don't know what's going on here, I'm going to have a video series coming out, I think, in the near future on uh, matplotlib and all the different stuff that you can do with it. I've already got it in my social network series, but I'll explain it a lot more in depth in a later series. Uh, essentially, it's a way that we can kind of graph out, in this case, a scatter plot. So we're going to set the figure size to 50 by 50. That's This is a lot of data, 22,000 data points that are plotted out. So if graph size of 50 by 50, I found was actually what I needed to make everything graph out correctly. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to plot it out with the x axis, the y axis, and we are going to set c equal to colors d. Um, make sure I got that right. Yep. For d and k mean indices. So it's going to go in and identify for each item in k means indices. It's going to identify which cluster it's in. So one of those five. And it's going to go into our color list right here and grab the corresponding index. So cluster zero would be R, red, blue, C, et cetera, on down the list until you get to all, all five. So zero through four, if you're doing the correct syntax for indexing. And next comes time to actually show the data. So we're going to say for I, TX, comma, TXT, and enumerate. So we're going to enumerate over. Now, this is where our names are coming in. If you remember from the last video, we grabbed all the descriptions as one set and all the names as another. And remember, they were all indexed at the same point. So we're going to now use that names object. And we're going to enumerate over it. And we're going to say ax.annotate. And we're going to actually grab txt, which is going to be the name itself. And because we're dealing with a lot of data, we're just going to grab the first five characters of the individual's name. Now, you can do this with none. You can do this with all. I found that with the first five on a graph of 50 by 50, with the plot points being so close, this was kind of a nice meeting ground. In a real world example, I would make a much larger plot and I would uh, actually plot out the entire individual's name so I could see where they're all at. But for this demonstration, this is going to be a little easier to show in video format. So the next thing that we're going to pass in, the next argument, is going to be um, x-axis. So we're going to plot out the x-axis, i, and the y-axis, i. So it's going to go through and actually make sure that those corresponding x and y axes plots are going to receive the correct annotation. And next, what we need to do is we need to save this figure. And again, I'm not expecting you to understand the code here. Rather, I'm more interested in you seeing just the end result, which is the data plotted out. There are better ways to do this. There's, um, you can do more custom stuff. You can actually create 20 different colors to correspond to 20 clusters. You can generate fake or uh, randomized hexadecimal colors. This is purely for demonstration purposes so that you can see what the data looks like when plotted. So when we execute this, you're going to see it run just like it did before. In theory, <laughs> it's thinking right now going through. So it's already gone through. It's already developed the k-means model. And it's right now it's going through and it's actually plotting everything, making the graph. And it's going to save it as trc.png in the directory. And we'll let it run. And this does take some time because remember, it's producing a fairly large figure that's plotting twenty, roughly 22,000 individuals on it. And now we have it right here. I'm going to open it up. And we see our data now plotted out. And what you can see are the five clusters that we asked it to find. So let's look. Cluster zero was red. One is blue. Three is, or two is cyan. So that would make this up here cluster two. That would make this down here, uh, this blue right here, that's the, the blue cluster. And you can see right here immediately why five clusters isn't nearly enough because the data between blue and magenta is overlapping significantly. So there's definitely multiple clusters in that data that could be kind of finessed out. And that's why 20 clusters is probably something a little bit better. But what's fascinating here is that we see a clear isolation of really a couple different groups, mainly our cluster up here. So there is something that links all of these individuals in this blue cluster and makes them very, very unique. So the cyan color, which was cluster number in our case, 012, cluster two, it is looking very unique. And if we go to our two cluster points, we can look at our new freshly printed off, I believe it's under data. Is that where I dropped it off at? Uh, data TRC results. So we pull this up, it should have only two clusters. And so we can see cluster number Two, the cyan cluster is dealing with concepts of amnesty, granted operative. So we're seeing a lot of overlap of concepts of am, uh, amnesty and MK. And so I guarantee you, if you were to go and look at these individuals in the actual descriptions tag, you would see that there was a lot of overlap between these people being connected to the MK organization and the granting of amnesty and probably something to do with uh, injury and killing as well. So that's essentially how you can take that k-means data 
and plot it out on a graph. And again, this is not the correct number of clusters. This is just to demonstrate the process for actually producing data visualization from our k-means model and our topic clustering. But what we're able to see here are clear topics that are popping out in this TRC data. In other words, these descriptions have clear overlapping subject matter and isolated subject matter to make topics relevant. If I were to look at this with only having seen this, I know that topic modeling is an avenue worth pursuing because these descriptions are unique enough but similar enough to see overlap between them. So hopefully now you have a sense of what k-means looks like when plotted out and a little bit of code that you can work with for actually doing the plotting yourself. And again, I'll provide a link in the description down below for where I got this from uh, Stack Overflow. I don't want to take credit for someone else's work. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. And like always, if there's a question that you have or if something was confusing, let me know in the comments down below. And if I don't know the answer, I'll try and find the answer for you. Have a great day.